Great. All right. So let's um, uh, let's get going with a, 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 a chat first of all or a talk. And um, they say awareness is the, the greatest agent of change. So to get us going, I can ask my fellow partner, Susan Granfield, uh, to impart her wisdom on what we can all do to really notice what is going on right now uh, in and around us. So over to you, Susan. I'll let you carry on. Hey, thank you. Um... Morning everyone, it's great to see some familiar faces and some new people as well. Um, I am going to do something slightly different uh, this morning, but first of all I just want to, um, I guess, position the, 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 the section I'm going to talk about. There's a phrase that's been used quite a lot recently, I don't know if you've heard it, um, but it's about us being in the same storm but in different boats. So it seems it's quite prevalent, it's been used quite a lot at the moment. and. I think it was a reaction to people initially saying, oh, we're all in the same boat. And the reality is we're not. We've all been in our own boats in this, uh, this storm that we've been in. And, and I think that's really, really key when we talk about reflecting on our experience and we talk about what, what, we, you know, what the future looks like for us personally and in our own businesses. So something that I'm really conscious of is um, it's very easy to get, and I'm, def I'm deliberately using this word infected, but get infected by what other people are doing or not doing. And the more we connect with the media, with social media, um, and indeed with other people, which we do naturally, the more chance we have of, of catching whatever their mindset is. And my focus with my clients is always around turning our attention inwards, um, uh, and looking at what's going on in our, in our own minds, our own mindset, and, and choosing how we want to move forward. So that's really the kind of the, the where I'm at with the point that we're at in, in this whole scenario is we've got more information now than we had um, a few months ago because we've got experience now. Um, and um, But at the same time, we don't really know what the future is going to look like. So. A key thing really is to pause and say, right, what's going on for me and what does that mean for me going forward? And we actually all have a lot more choice than we sometimes give ourselves credit for. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to put up slides. I'm not even going to actually tell you anything, um, which might seem a bit odd. What I'd like you to do is to just sit back and relax. And we're going to do a bit of a visualisation exercise. Um, so hopefully you're, you're up for that. Um, if not, go and get a cup of tea and come back in about eight minutes time. Um, but if you're up for it, and, and I think you are, I know a lot of people are, 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 um, are game to try new things uh, on the call. So just sit back and relax. Um, I'd invite you to close your eyes. It just makes it easier to not be distracted by what other people are doing um, on, the, on the screen. So just take a few minutes. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take a few minutes just to turn our attention inwards. So as I say, maybe just gently close your eyes and just become aware of where you are right now. And I mean that very literally. So you might, just allow your attention to drop down to your feet. So just notice that your feet are probably in contact with the ground. So just notice how that feels. And then just become aware of the contact between the body and whatever the body's resting on, the chair, whatever you're sitting on right now. So all we're doing is just giving ourselves a moment to let our mind and our body be in the same place. Often our minds are somewhere very different to where our body is. So we're just becoming present. And just kind of allowing the weight of the body to drop down. So for the next few minutes, you, you've got nowhere else you need to be. You've got nothing you need to do. So you can just let the weight of the body drop down into the chair, drop down into the ground. And maybe just take a few slightly deeper breaths. So you may have had a busy morning already. The mind might be quite active. Maybe you've got a busy day coming up. So just taking a few deeper breaths is a bit of a sign to the mind and the body that you can just relax a little bit. 
And maybe notice how the body relaxes a little bit naturally when it releases the out breath. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to, as you sit here in this perhaps more relaxed present state, just take yourself back in your mind's eye to the 23rd of March this year. So just have that sense of going back, rewinding back in time to when lockdown, lockdown officially started here in the UK, the 23rd of March. What was that like for you? What thoughts were in your mind on that day or around that day about what lay ahead? What were you thinking? So just notice whatever comes into your mind, whatever you recall. What were you feeling? And maybe physical feelings might have been emotions, but back in the 23rd of uh, March, what were the feelings and emotions that you were experiencing? And just as best you can, recalling with no judgment, just noticing. What was your reaction? So what do you remember doing? What was your behaviour? How did you react to this, the start of lockdown? And what did you see other people doing? What was their reaction? People close to you, people that you were connected with perhaps via social media. So just bring into mind what it was like all those months ago. And now I'm going to invite you to just to start to walk forward. So imagine that there's, there's a path or there's a road leading out in front of you. And you're just going to start to walk forward. And that path is going to take you through April, May, June. And as you walk forward, notice around you key events for you that happened over those few months. What were significant things that happened in your life, in your business? through April, May, June, and just notice whatever comes up for you. So there might have been challenging, difficult decisions you had to make. Perhaps there were surprising, maybe unexpected opportunities that arose for you. So just noticing as you walk forward, along the path, through the last few months, what are the things that pop into your mind? And how do you, what, what were the emotions that you were feeling when you experienced those different events? How did you respond? How did other people respond? Customers, colleagues, family? So you're just walking along this path and just recalling, allowing things to pop into your mind. And you might have lots coming into your mind or you might have not much, that's totally fine. But as you kind of allow yourself just to explore the last few months, what do you feel now? How does it feel for you as you effectively walk down this road and notice those experiences around you? And so I'm going to invite you to walk along the path and get to today, so 10th of July. And turn and look back along that road you've just walked along. So metaphorically, turning around, looking back at all the things you've just brought back into your mind. What would you like to say to yourself now? So what would you say to yourself with all of that experience at the front of your mind? What 
what would you like to say to others, so other people that have been with you on this journey? What would you say to them? And as you stand here looking back, what are some of the really great things that have happened? Things you've learned, things that you've tried that have really worked. What are the things you want to take forward as you continue along this path? Just notice whatever comes into your mind. What do you want to take forward? And then what do you want to leave behind? It may be things that you realise are no longer serving you, no longer serving your business, no longer serving your customers. What do you want to leave behind? And that could be services, products, thoughts, emotions. Just notice whatever comes up. Okay, now as you stand here on the 10th of July, a time machine has just appeared in front of you. So just jump into the time machine and it's going to transport you forward to January 2021. So you get out the time machine and we're six or so months in the future. What do you see around you? What would you love to see going on in your life, in your business? in six months or so time. Now here's an opportunity to create the future as you would like it to be. So what would you love to be going on in your business? Look around at the people, who, who's around you, who's with you? What are they doing? What can you hear people saying? So this isn't what do you think it's going to be like, it's what do you want it to be like and how do you feel January 2021 and things are pretty good. How are you feeling? Okay, we could spend a lot more time here, but the time machine's calling us back. So we'll jump back in the time machine to kind of bring you back to today. And I'm just gonna invite you now just to let go of all of that. So just come back to being present, just drop back into your body, feel yourself sitting on the chair, notice the breath. And just know that that exercise has got your subconscious working away on what you've learned what you want to take forward and how you want to create the future you don't in this moment need to work out how you don't need to see the path ahead you've already started to create that so just sit for a moment to just indulge in that feeling Okay, so whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes, move around, stretch, whatever you need to do. Hopefully nobody has nodded off. So that point about we don't need to know right now exactly what the path looks like, I firmly believe is true because that's actually the reality. None of us really know what it's going to look like. However, Having a sense of where, what you can see for the future for yourself and coming back to the present and then saying, what are the next, what are the first one, two, three steps that I can take? What are the things I can see from here, from today that I can do moving forward? Because the landscape's gonna look different in the next month, two months, six months. But instead of waiting for someone else to suggest what that, what the future might look for us, I'm all about, choosing for ourselves and stepping into a space of being empowered and going right what do i want and then taking one or two steps to make you to take you further along that path towards where you want to get to so 
I would suggest doing something like that periodically and um, I have recorded that as an audio and if anyone would like it I'll put my email address in the chat I can email it to you and when you've got you know some time and periodically over the next few months just do that again because it's a really powerful exercise to do it takes us out of trying to cognitively work everything out and takes us into a place where we have access to so much more wisdom when we turn into internally that's me Jim I'll hand back to you that's great Susan thank you um it's so important we, we've known for a long long time that you know recognize that business owners take decisions in their business based on how they feel Yes, the numbers and the, the rest of the stuff is important, but it's that feeling that, that helps uh, move, make the decisions and move the business forward. So uh, I agree with you. It's so important that we have the, the, the right mindset at the moment, the right feeling of, of confidence uh, or a, a sense of perspective. I think, um, you know, even going back to remembering that aspiration that you had for your business when you, you, you set it up. So if you have any, if you have questions for Susan, uh, please get them in the box and um, we will get uh, those asked. While I've got you though, Susan, there was a, a question came in. I'll maybe get you to, to have a, a go at answering this one. Um, if during the lockdown we have sufficiently changed our services, staffing levels and the skill sets we have to offer, how do we work with existing clients who themselves have possibly and most probably went through similar changes to maintain the previous relationship that we had? Um, yeah, I, I, my initial response is, is to really connect with people at a very human level, which might sound a bit obvious, but um, we've all been through different scenarios and we've all had to, to change how we're doing things. So I think the very first thing that we can do to maintain and build um, relationships um, with customers, suppliers, stakeholders, whoever, is, is empathy. Um, but also to not assume that we know what they've been through or to not assume that their experience has been the same or even similar to ours. So I, I think it's opening up the lines of communication and starting with not, it's about being of service, not selling. So, so to not have the first interactions about, right, how can we get back into doing business together? It's about how can I connect with you as a human being and try and understand what's been going on for you? Because what you need from me now might be different. And that goes for employees, customers, etc. So start with seeing people as human beings. And we've all been in different boats. So try and understand what boat they've been in. Okay, yeah, and kind of related to that, uh, there was a question around how do we reach out to potential clients in a way which acknowledges their struggles but enables us to start building relationships? Yeah, I think very similar. Um, and, and I think um, going slowly would be my suggestion is to not rush into it too quickly. I think there's, being a small business owner myself, there is a, there can be a, a feeling of urgency I need to get out there I need to be I need to connect with people before other people do I need to get more revenue coming into my business and I think that could be counterproductive so going slowly um, and then going at the speed that your potential clients want to go at if they want to go quickly great um, but calibrating to people and so again that thing of showing up as a human being asking questions thinking about your intention if my intention is to get business from you that's going to feel very different to my intention of how can I support and serve you um, how can we develop a different relationship perhaps um, but go more slowly than you than your body and your mind might want to go right now that's that would be my advice. Craig have you got an input on that one? Um, I'll just say ask questions um, you know you don't go in in sales mode and um, ask how they're doing ask where they are, ask how they're getting on on a personal level and a business level. Um, but if, if this next comment doesn't seem really obvious, listen to the answer, because the answers will determine whether you, whether there's an opportunity or not, or you just need to give that person some, <clears throat> excuse me, some support, some positivity and politely retreat. And I, I think that will be remembered. Uh, and I can't echo enough what Susan was saying just about, you know, it's, it's just a bit, getting these relationships and connections warmed up, not going in a, a sales mode just now. And I think that will, uh, 
I'm going to cover that in a little bit of my talk as well, but lo loyalty will be rewarded. Great, okay. Okay, thanks Susan again for getting 46 people to, to pause um, for a few moments. Um, that was great.